Park Service Director Stephen Mather is the George Washington of the National Park Service. He's generally regarded as the father of the National Park Service. It's a family tradition to go camping at one of the national parks every summer. In 1885, Stephen Mather entered the University of California, Berkeley as a young student with a passion for exploring the outdoors. He joined the exclusive fraternity Sigma Chi and made many friends along the way. Hey, we should have to Yosemite this week for a championship. I heard the views of the valley are just amazing. Sounds great, I'm in. Yeah, anyway, as I was saying... Mather frequently took trips with his fraternity brothers and classmates to hike and explore California's natural wonders. He also joined the Sierra Club, where he went on their famous outings to places like Mount Rainier. Stephen's admiration for nature would lead to him promoting the ideas of a government service to manage national parks. Stephen's actions would lead to the signing of the National Park Service Act in 1916. In the early 20th century, Stephen Mather was a borax manufacturer in what is now known as Death Valley National Park. He worked to limit industrial activities like borax mining to preserve the national beauty of the area. Stephen worked long hours at the Thor Kiltson Mather Borax Company, and his hard work eventually paid off. Through his job, Stephen was able to become a billionaire. He understood that to protect the natural wonders of Death Valley, he had to confront the industrial forces that threatened to exploit its resources. In his free time, Stephen worked to promote the idea of national parks through writing letters to newspapers. Throughout all of his letters, Stephen Mather focused on different things such as areas of improvement, different monuments, and future park developments. The national parks are more than the storehouse of nature's rarest treasures. They're the playlands of the people, wonderlands easily accessible to the rich and the humble alike. They are great out of the doors recreation grounds where men, women, and children can forget their cares and the sounds of the cities for a few days. Stevens' drive to spread his ideas to the public led to campaigns for his goal through public speeches. These speeches combined with Stevens' letters and financial support caused a larger focus on the movement. The parks do not belong to one state or to one nation. The Yosemite, the Yellowstone, the Grand Canyon are national properties in which every citizen has a vested interest. They belong as much to the man of Massachusetts, of Michigan, of Florida, as they do to the people of California, of Wyoming, and of Arizona. Thank you. and all of Steven's hard work proved to be worth it. Come in. Thank you, sir. On August 25th, the Organic Act of 1916, also known as the National Park Service Act, was finally signed into the law by President Woodrow Wilson. This act represented a turning point in history, as it created the first government-owned service meant to protect and encourage America's national parks like Yellowstone. The National Park Service worked with several government officials, such as the Secretary of the Interior, to assist the service appointed director. And that director was Stephen Mather. Stephen Mather's role as a director was to organize the maintenance of different parks. These efforts led to the great consequence of more national parks being established. Also, to promote these newly created parks, they wrote letters to newspapers to gain publicity. While doing his job, Stephen would have his assistant, Horace, by his side, who helped the service gain as many supporters as they could. Oops. 
Stephen Mather left the office during the early months of January 1917 due to a severe episode of manic depression, also known as bipolar depression. This wasn't the first time, nor the last, that Stephen would experience periods of depression, but it was one of the most significant episodes he had. In his two-year period of hospitalization from early 1917 to mid-1919, Mather kept his title as the director of the National Park Service. However, he could not fill in this position, so his assistant acted unofficially in the place of Stephen Mather. Twelve years later, Stephen's mental health forced him to leave the office in January of 1929 after a stroke and another intense period of manic depression. Thank you for all your help, Horace. Of course, sir. It was a pleasure working with you. Horace Albright had been working alongside Stephen since 1910 and helped him put the plan for a National Park Service into action. By 1929, Albright had already proved himself capable of director, as he acted as a temporary director of the service from 1917 to 1919, guiding it through the harsh economic conditions of World War I. Although the service was in good hands with Horace, Stevens' contributions to the service could not be understated, but unfortunately, his final office paper was signed and that was officially his last day in office. Thanks to the diligence and hard work of Stephen Mather, the National Park Service currently has a total of 63 national parks, which fall under the massive 425 individual parks operated by the National Park Service, which include places such as national monuments and international historic sites. Also, there are an additional 150 related areas maintained by us right now. In total, the land from these areas currently cover over 85 million acres of land across all 50 states. It's safe to say that without Mather's extensive contributions and immense love for nature, we would not have these amazing parks which we have today. Thank you, Stephen Mather.